So watch your P's and Q's, we are recording. Uh, just some helpful tips here, your audio settings. If you can't hear us, can't speak, you can unmute yourself. Uh, what we'll do is we'll let the, come on in. What we'll do is we'll let our presenters um, kind of talk and then they'll take a little break and you can ask them a, a question then or we can save questions to the end. If you have a burning question that you really, really want to ask, go ahead and put it in the chat box and then I'll be monitoring the chat box and I'll, I'll pipe in with the questions as, as breaks permit. And with that, let me introduce our speakers today. So with us today, we have Debbie Kelly, field specialist in horticulture in, in Jefferson County. Come on in. We also have Tamara Rial, that is a field specialist in horticulture in Jackson County. And they will be talking about a tool that they use which promotes volunteer engagement with the community, especially on the education side of what master gardeners are you know, looking to do. It helps them figure out the education piece, I feel, uh, of their projects and really makes them think about the relevance or the, the outcomes or the impacts of their projects. This is a really good tool and I'm going to turn it over to Debbie she'll tell us about how she uses the tool. Hi, thanks for having Tamara and I um, for this particular presentation. We appreciate it, Eric, so thank you. Um, I'll kind of get started. Um, a number of years ago, uh, the Master Gardener leadership team was meeting in the agriculture building. And I know that Jennifer was there Robert, were you at that meeting, the one where Rob Kallenbach had come in? Um, probably. Okay, so if you were, then feel free to, to add in to the conversation then as well. Um, at that particular meeting, one of the things that Rob had told us as a leadership team was that, um, in presenting to us, was the, the concept that they wanted to double the impact of agriculture by 2030. And it was one of the first times that um, we as horticulture specialists had heard that concept. And so we were sitting in the room asking him questions and we were like, so what does that really mean? Does that mean that if I have 50 master gardeners in my chapter, you want me to double the impact by having 100 master gardeners by 2030? And he said, no, not necessarily. What he's, he was looking for is what is the impact that the master gardeners have as a whole across the state and how that then can um, be doubled by the year 2030. And so there was um, some, some discussion with that and it seemed to be that a lot of it was um, anecdotal, just what some of the different master gardeners were telling us as coordinators. Um, in that meeting, Sarah Denkler was there and she had made a comment, I don't remember if it was to the full group or if it was just to me, if I was sitting next to her or not, I can't recall. Uh, but she said she had like a half sheet where if they have a volunteer site that she likes to have a leader be responsible for that site. And then just to fill out this half sheet of who and where and what they plan on doing at that site, just so that she had a record of it. And then I asked her to send that to me. Um, so I know Jennifer was there. And Robert, if you re were remembering that conversation, do either of the two of you have anything to add to that, that conversation when we were in that room with Rob? No, I don't really have anything to add. Rob, I do remember you being there. We had a yeah, pretty full room that day. Yeah. Um, um, I think Rob kind of left it open a little bit to how we wanted to double the impact uh, on things. Um, but I think we all kind of agreed that that means the master gardeners have to do a little more toward the mission than what they might have otherwise been doing. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's kind of what I remember getting out of that. Rob, more toward the mission of educate, create, and connect? More toward the mission of helping others learn to grow. Um, the master gardener. have the education, create, connect at that point. 
but it does fit in really, really well with that, I think. Yeah, so the impression I had is to answer, and, and having been the SARE coordinator, I learned with the evaluations, how do you do impact? And it was kind of answering that so what question. So yeah. what you have master gardeners. So the answering the so what question is what are they doing and can we quantify and qualify that? And I think that was also a discussion of how do we go about doing it? And so then what I ended up doing uh, from that discussion and I worked in conjunction with um, uh, Sarah is I created what I call my master gardener chapter volunteer activity. I don't particularly like that title. Um, what I ended up doing is I came back to the chapter and I said that we needed to show some sort of an impact. Of course, there was a little bit of pushback, which I understand. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of said, this is what campus is asking us to do. Um, I had a group of people that were interested in being on a committee and this is what the committee came up with. So we're looking at, you know, the chapter, the date that this was filled out and turned in, the master gardener, the project leader. And so that's going to be one of the master gardener uh, volunteers would be the project leader. Uh, their contact information, the address of the volunteer site, um, the project proposal, what it is that they really wanted uh, to do at that particular site. Um, if there's a partner at this particular project, who is that? And the number of master gardeners expected to work on the project, as well as the goals of the project set forth by uh, the partnership, what they agreed uh, to have done or accomplished. Because um, I'm sure many of you have people call, just like I do, hey, we want to start a garden. Can your master gardeners come build it for me? And I'm like, no, but we can advise. And so that's why um, the goals are set forth. Um, we also, um, you know, I try to explain that my master gardeners are not free labor. Uh, we also discussed um, some of the different uh, projects, if I recall correctly, at that same meeting, Jennifer and Robert. Uh, but some of the things that we would like at our volunteer sites are definitely an education component. Uh, providing support to nonprofits, promoting horticulture as a profession, to use um, the work as therapeutic wellness, to serve the socially disadvantaged, to benefit as a benefit to the local chapter, and to help promote environmental stewardship. And so if they're going to have a site, they need at least one of these. And the one that I always try to stress is the educational component. What are they going to do as part of the educational component? Um, and then what I asked them to do is um, fill that out. Um, um, can, hold on just a second, I have a question. Sure. Um, so the educational component, are you saying that's required for every project plus some other ones or can there be some other ones without the educational component? Um, and the, I'm using the educational component in a very broad concept, um, and I'll kind of give an example. So one of the ladies on the committee, she was working, she had a butterfly garden that she maintained on property at Parks and Rec. Um, and so one of the things I think we discussed was that our volunteer site should not take uh, work away from existing existing types of businesses, whether it's lawn care or landscape. Also, parks and recs have, most of them have their own employees, so we don't want to take away from their work. So I asked her about that, and she said that her kids went, took swimming lessons and were at parks and rec there twice a week, and they were on a continuous swimming schedule. Um, and that she just more or less uh, asked permission and built this butterfly garden, and that's all she did was maintain it. And I asked her what type of an educational component could she incorporate into that? And of course, um, most of our master gardeners are not in the education system, so they kind of all looked at me. 
And I said, for example, since you're already working in the garden, maybe create a flyer and just tape it to a bulletin board or the door and say, want to learn about butterfly gardening on this date, come to this part of the park and learn about butterfly gardening and do that maybe twice during the summer, during the growing season. And that's her education component. If nobody comes, nobody comes. If four people show up, then she's explaining to them about the butterfly garden and, and just providing them with information. Um, so that's um, how if there is nobody that passes by to even ask a question, that's how she could incorporate an education component into that particular example. Now I have a location, it's Jefferson College, the community college here in town. Um, there really is no true educational component, kind of like what I just tried to explain. Um, what they do is I get to use uh, their facilities rent free when I want to have um, any of my master gardener activities on their campus. And so that's a benefit to the chapter. Um, they do answer questions as people walk by, but it's not a designated type of a true where they're going to be purposefully trying to educate someone. Does that help any, Robert? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think that's, that's an interesting benefit to the local chapter. I would have thought maybe fundraising or something like that, but the in-kind, I guess, the donation of facilities can matter too then. That's And I keep seeing something, Eric, were there any, I can't see the um, chat box. Were there any questions? Yes. Uh, well, Terry asked if, you know, we could provide a copy of that. So what I put in the chat box is a link to the document. I placed it in box. And if you haven't asked, accessed box in a while, it's the same, you know, your paw print, same login credentials. And if that link doesn't work, then I'll try another way. But yes, definitely we will provide copies. Okay. And so I asked them to, to fill out this form. Uh, we started this this year for the first time back in January. Um, as uh, the season went along, we had more individuals uh, who had sites who wanted to be um, listed in the database. So we as coordinators have control of when they do their pull down, where they're doing their volunteering. Um, and I had about 25 to 30 different locations. And when I printed all the information off, very few of them actually had hours listed. So I got rid of all of those. This was a, a, a I worked on this for a year before we actually started it. Um, so the, the committee agreed that anybody that did not have one of these forms or was not a specific designated site, and we do have a couple of designated sites that the chapter and, and the officers agreed upon, um, but they all need to have this volunteer form filled out. Once it's filled out um, and submitted in, and it can be submitted anytime throughout the year, the project leader, which is gonna be the Master Gardener volunteer, one of the officers for the chapter, as well as myself, will just sign it to make, and just to read it, just to verify it, and then it goes into um, our, goes out onto our Q drive here in the office so that there's a record of it. Um, what I asked them to do is that by Thanksgiving, I would like to have a report back of their activities for the year. And so underneath the project support with these criteria, I did the ongoing project review, asking these two questions. How has this program impacted the public? And what are the quantitative impacts of this program in the last year? And that's what I was hoping I would get some, some information from that. Um, the example that I provided for you about the butterfly garden, I did give them two, and I'm sorry, I didn't prepare and have that up, but when Tamara shows hers, um, we'll see her examples. Um, and so the butterfly garden was one of them. Uh, as an example. So I would, the uh, report would be something along the line of at the Parks and Rec uh, Butterfly Garden, 
two activities, two educational uh, opportunities uh, were advertised with a flyer on the door to the building. Uh, four people came uh, as a total for the two events and learned about butterfly gardening. Um, so that it, and then she would talk a little bit perhaps more about what she did at the garden itself. And that would have been the report. That was a sample re report so that they would have an idea of what they really needed to report on when they, they uh, uh, sent this back to me. I, um, at the beginning of November, I emailed all of the project leaders, the master gardener leaders for each of these different locations and asked them to go ahead and and send me a report back and I'll show those to you here in a little bit. Um, are there any other questions or comments about this? Okay, so then Tamara Real was hired and she and I chatted back and forth having, um, and this is before Justin was hired, um, and chatting back and forth about uh, working with master gardeners in the urban area. And I shared this form with her as well. And I stopped sharing my computer and so we can go ahead and I'll turn it over to Tamara. Thank you, um, I am gonna figure out how I can Share my screen, hold on. There's a little share icon, probably down about the middle. Oh, there you go. All right, thank you. All right, so you can already see that my, my application looks a bit different, but I use Debbie's as a template for what I did, so some of it will look familiar. Uh, first of all, I did put the extension logo on there just to, um, Emphasize again with with my EMGs. Or, sorry, and I you heard me say this. Maybe um, I call them extension master gardeners now. Um, and why I have this on here is because um, we were struggling to help everybody understand that they were not an individual organization or a partnering organization, but they're actually a University of Missouri Extension program. So everything that I'm doing, I'm I'm slapping this logo on there. Um, and sometimes in addition to the Master Gardener one, and, and you'll hear me talking about Extension Master Gardeners or EMGs, um, just to help reinforce that. And, and I've had a lot of buy-in on that. My, my EMGs are really wanting to have that extension part in there because it, it gives credentials, um, elevates what they're doing so that they know that they are part of the university. So um, then I, when I made this document, um, it, it has more details. So, so Debbie's is really great for something that's like uh, just really to the point. My EMGs wanted to have more information on there and this was a collaborative effort. Um, we've been working on this for about half a year to um, find out where, where holes are, what needs to be expanded on. You'll see that um, all the information um, that they might need is right here. So I have our emails, emails just very handy, ready to go. This is also a fillable document, so um, if I need to put in the date, it's actually, it's, it's pretty cool. I, I learned how to do this. I was, I was geeking out a little bit on it, but I can just put it in there. Um, also, when I, when I do this, um, this makes sure that we get everything that, all the information I need, and that they know exactly what it is that I'm looking for. Um, it also makes it so that it can expand, so right now it's one page. But it could, it could be three pages by the time they're done if they really wanted to have a lot like in the goals. Um, but my point in doing this, similar to, to Debbie's, is I want to make sure that I get all the information that I need. Um, so for example, for this community site contact, um, right now we have 17 gardens. That's a lot of gardens. And many of these gardens we've had for years and years and years. Surprisingly, we might not, at least from the extension side, we might not even know who that community contact is. So all I, when I first came in, I knew that I was supposed to talk to our garden coordinator, um, the, the head one, and, and he might know who the contact is for the community, but some of this has just been tradition. We've been, we've been working with these guys for 17 years or 20 years. And so um, we wanna make sure that we know who it is that we're working with. 
I also wanted to have a description of the activity. I want them to think about the mission of their activity, and that is actually separate from the goals. I want to have very specific goals of what their project is. The next thing is having an anticipated start date and an end date. For a lot of our projects, it seems like we are coming in to help and then turn it back over to the community. So I want them to think about that. Granted, there are some that might be ongoing, like we have the Truman House. And this, it's a, it's a unique garden um, that, that doesn't really have a start and end date, but it's one that we can, we can it's a benefit to the community. Um, but, but like I said, it isn't something we can just hand over. Um, like uh, Debbie's, we have these same categories, the public education, the horticulture profession, I have public education on the top and I did that on purpose um, and I actually do require an educational component for every single project. Um, a lot of our projects have been pretty much maintenance and, and I would say that in many of our projects the community might not even know about what, what this garden is and, and what even perhaps the master gardeners are. And so that's something that we're doing new this year is we're we're having a huge public outreach push. And so this, this aspect, um, you'll see on the, on the next page when I show you, but I want them to have a very specific example of what, what it is that they're going to do um, for public outreach. So as Debbie gave an example, when someone asked her, what can I do? Well, you can have a butterfly garden walk and tour. Um, walking tour. So, so that would be an example. And I kind of zoom to the back page so you can see that I have given them a whole bunch of examples of different things that they can do uh, to increase public outreach. And, and this was actually really overwhelming, I think, when we first brought it up. And people were like, we are already so busy, we're already working so hard, and we're having trouble getting volunteers to come. And, and so how are we going to do public outreach too? And so you'll see that there's some things that, that are as simple as putting a sign out, like what, what Debbie was saying, but putting the sign out that says, EMGs in the garden, come ask us questions. And so, so some of our garden coordinators have decided that, that they might just have a couple working days that are open to the public or, or that encourage public to come and talk to them and other ones are going to say every single working day is going to be a public outreach day um, by making sure that they have signed it out and that they've advertised to the public that they're there. Um, going back to this, an example of benefit to the local chapters, something else that we're encouraging is to, uh, an example would be to make sure that our EMG bookmarks are available um, and also that they're finding ways that they can distribute those in one of our gardens that they're they're not actually allowed to contact the people that work in this community garden um, it's it's kind of it's not a pantry garden per se we, the food that we grow we can give to a pantry but other gardeners are able to just come in and work in it and it's it's put on by the Blue Springs Parks and Rec but um, what they've done to make sure that there is public outreach available in there they have a chalkboard that they're able to write gardening hints and tips. They also have a, a little lending library. They have um, lots of, of guide sheets that are available. Um, so so they, they are able to make sure that they have some public outreach in there. I also want when people are looking to uh, start a garden and we've had people come up and ask us, hey, I have a great project idea. And, and like Debbie was saying, most people seem to want us to just come and do landscaping for them. Um, this, this application is to help guide them away from just, just uh, landscaping, but I also want them to think about how, how we're going to have impact. I, this is something that, of course, we want to do, but I want them to think about it as well. I want, I want them to be thinking how we're going to gather impact, and I'll just flip to the next page. I, I put some examples of ways to measure impact here as well. So. Um, getting beyond just collecting the number of, of attendings, attendees, but also if they're doing some sort of 
um, demonstration. They can also make a pre-post survey as well. Um, I, I would like them to make sure that they're counting how many pounds of food that they're, they're donating. Uh, I like this one, collecting quotes um, from attendees so we can, we can talk about which kind of income as well. Back to the other page. Um, cost, that's always a big one. Um, it's easy to just say, hey, we're going to start this project, but I want them to think about what kind of costs are involved. And, and when they're thinking about it before they even start a project, then I think it really helps us later on and um, when we already have this information. I've had an application turned in that most of this was left blank. And I just I had it back in a very nice way to say, I, I need this information. Um, and by having it on the application, they knew that they needed to think more about it. And by having it be a fillable application, I'm able to just email it. Um, it I don't have to worry about handwriting. Um, it just, it, it makes it nice and easy to come in. Um, a lot of this is, is fairly straightforward. I, I wanted them to think about the recruitment method. Um, we, we have some really big gardens and getting people to come might not work but easily, so I want them to think that through too. And then um, we've had a little bit of this being an issue. Um, we've had, especially when we have new EMGs come in, they think, oh, I'm already volunteering a lot, or I already have this business and EMGs can come and help me. So I put this on there just to make it clear, um, just to reinstate what they already know when they're coming in, but they may have overlooked, to just make sure they know that, that they're not supposed to financially benefit from it. And also I put um, a requirement with a date of when I need a report in. And like Debbie said, on the back, I have some examples of reports and I'll show you those in a second. But um, having a date is, is helpful for me. Um, and I put it before, like at the beginning of this month because that's pretty much at the end of all the gardens, um, in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, but also it gives me time to sort everything for my reports. Also, our, our EMGs, they do quarterly reports there for sharing with um, the county councils. Um, so I told them, if you're already doing that, you don't have to do a report specifically for this for me. But um, this, this project application is not just for our gardens, it's for all of our different projects. Okay, on this page, again, um, I put lots of examples of public outreach events and activities. Right here, I did give an example of, of where if they have a new idea, they can come up with it. But I just had other at first, but some of my EMGs are like, you need to make sure that that gets approved. Otherwise, someone might just write something in and just act as if that's approved. So um, I did put this line in here where it has to be approved and specifically so that we can go back and reference. Um, here are the examples of the year-end reports. Um, so I, I kind of lifted these from Debbie, maybe added a little bit more, like added this quote, just so that I think these, having sample impact reports are really important. They can see, oh, it's, it's not very much, but it gives very specific information um, with numbers um, and quotes, and, and they can see that it's not overwhelming to have to create this little report. I really like Debbie's, and I might need to revise this to have specific questions to guide the reports because I'm afraid that I might not get all the information I want even though I have these examples. So I probably will revise this and put in some of those questions that Debbie has um, or put them in here with the sample instructions because um, I really like that. But uh, that's that's pretty much what I have. Um, one, one other benefit of this form is I'm going to use the same form and put up here that it's not necessarily project application, but project review, and give this to all of the different projects on an annual basis. Um, I, I, in our MOU, we have in there that all of the projects will be reviewed on an annual basis, just as best practices for businesses. Um, and so by using the same form, they're able to go back and review their project and make sure that they're, they're actually meeting the same goals and mission that they, that they started out with. So this, this form has multiple uses and 
and like I said, we've been using it for about six months, so it's still kind of a pilot. Um, but so far, I've had I've had good buy-in on it, and and a lot of encouragement that it's that's going to be helpful. So, does anybody have any questions about about this this one? And if not, you know, the the volunteer who comes in at the end of the year with their all their hours written down on paper for some project that was never never approved. Were you asking what happens if that that happens? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we would try and work with them, but but this is something that we're making sure that everybody knows is out there that all projects have to be approved beforehand, um, otherwise they won't get credit for it. Uh, we haven't run into anybody doing that yet, just because I I think we've made sure that they've known beforehand that it has to be approved beforehand. Um, I guess it's it's definitely possible that that could happen, but I also put on this application in multiple places. You have to have approval, and and so I would. I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but if it does, I guess we'll deal with it when it comes. I'd like to to make a comment here. So I have about seven sites that have the application. They um, master gardeners. I do not require them to spend. Um, time at any one of those different locations. Um, I asked them if they could because that's where a lot of the uh, master gardeners with experience are so that they could learn uh, from some of those experienced master gardeners as well. And, and so we do throughout the course and my class starts January 29th and we'll run through April 15th and at each class I have uh, one of the officers at each class and at break, um, they will um, talk about anything going on with the chapter or if one of the folks at the volunteer sites wants to come and talk about their particular site at the break, they do that. If there are master gardeners, and this was a concern with my group, is that, for example, we maintain the entrance to our subdivision because our association for the subdivision doesn't pay anybody to maintain it simply because we don't have the funds to be able to do that in our association. And so they wanted to put that down for their hours and I said, okay, um, put out some sign that says master gardeners are working or something along in that line. And so we had a couple of master gardener signs made that they could take and use. So I have also created in the database a miscellaneous so that folks can go ahead and do that. I wasn't, I wasn't going to require my master gardeners to work at just those where I have a, a report. Does that help to answer? That's my, my particular group. So each group may be a little bit different. Does that help some, Robert, with what your thoughts might have been? Yes, it does. Um, so these signs that you put out, are they like, like those um, temporary like real estate signs that stick in the ground, you know, with a couple of prongs there and have a sign on them, something like that? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, exactly. Okay. And they're, then, kind of, they're plastic and they just stick them in the ground. And they can pull them up and reuse them other places and all that. Yes. At many of our gardens, we have permanent signs, but at some of them we do, we'll either have an A-frame garden sign um, that, that mentions uh, Extension Master Gardeners, or we are looking at purchasing some, some of those real estate signs as well. I'm gonna stop the sh sign, uh, uh, screen sharing so we can just go back. Okay, so I'm going to go back and share again, and this time what I'm going to do is um, here are the sites, just so that you're aware of the different locations where um, I have for the main seven, and um, each of them have filled out some sort of an application. Um, just so that you're aware and then for each month we do a newsletter and this is listed in the newsletter every month just so that people are fully aware of um, what is happening and taking place so I've got five reports that have come in I'm just going to show them to you so this is the 911 memorial it is in front of um, Arnold uh, Parks and Rec 
um, and I've highlighted in, in yellow what I was hoping to get from this. And so it's a 911 memorial. They actually maintain it. Um, they meet twice a week. They usually talk to somebody at least once or twice each workday. Um, and they share uh, what they're doing and gardening tips. Um, and then they say that there's usually if there's a veteran, they will stop and make comment about it. Um, and then they talk about uh, what they're going to what they are doing in the fall for next spring. Um, so I thought this was a really good one in a sense that how many people they talk to um, each workday, which I thought was uh, pretty good. Another report, um, this one actually is over in Illinois, um, which I allow, even though it's not in my county. They, um, eat once a month, two to five master gardeners will volunteer for two to three hours. They have eight to 15 individuals each month um, on their work day that will go through that they will visit with. They have three heritage garden events and 30 to 40 uh, individuals um, attend um, those events and then what they've learned. This is um, a, a fort in Illinois, a French fort, um, and they farm, or they garden, rather, um, the way they did back in the 1700s when the garden, uh, when the fort was actually um, in its heyday. Another report that I have is um, Jefferson Barracks, uh, Building 53. This is in South County, just on the other side of the border, uh, Jeff from Jefferson County. Um, and Building 53, so we have a veterans hospital there and a lot of those different veterans go through rehabilitation or need an extended stay. Um, and uh, it depends on what the circumstances are. So there are a number of master gardeners that will go help uh, what was really interesting um, is that some of those veterans will see and when they're able to will actually go out onto the, into the garden on a regular basis. And they had eight veterans this past summer that came out to the gardens. Um, they use this as an opportunity to work alongside of the master gardeners and to learn about gardening. But I think what was really cool about this is that they then would go back to their physical therapist and say, I'm working in the garden. And then the physical therapist actually started doing specific types of exercises that they could use while they were in the garden, gardening at the same time. And I thought that that was, um, pretty good and very interesting. Next year, Dorothy says they're gonna to move to building 52, which is gonna be with veterans that have spinal injuries. So, and they're building beds, um, raised beds so that folks can come in um, and work in the gardens um, as well if need be. Uh, Jefferson College, and again, we do this one kind of in conjunction with the college. And they have eight master gardeners, they maintain the flower bed around the main flagpole on campus, as well as some large pots at building entrances. Um, they meet weekly and it just says they get questions from staff and students, but it doesn't give me as much information as what I would hope I could get. Um, and then the last one, this person in particular created, she didn't wanna do a Master Gardener Facebook page as a Master Gardener herself because um, she didn't want to have, she just wanted to do a gardening page for Jefferson County. Um, and then in the yellow highlight, she has 130 regular followers. Um, each posting has between 50 or 60 individuals that will see it. She has a verifiable number of viewers for the past 10 months. Um, and one person that, that um, follows her on an ongoing basis actually uh, took the Master Gardener class uh, in 2019 because she saw the class posted on this particular Jefferson County Gardening Facebook page. Um, and Linda, anytime anything happens with Master Gardeners, uh, she will post it out there, um, just making comment that she's a Master Gardener. Um, and then here's all the stuff that she's doing in her home yard and what she's doing just in general education wise. Um, so I thought that, that one was, was pretty good as well. Um, and that in general is um, the reports that I've received back. They're pretty simplistic. 
Um, I think they're a really good start for doing it for the first year. Um, I may try to incorporate some of Tamara's um, concepts from her uh, form into mine. I want to visit with my officers and see if there's anything that they might like to add in. And if it's not some of the things I want, see if I can give them justification as to why and then hopefully use this again. And anybody who's filled out a form last year will fill out a form this year. Comments, questions, thoughts? Just a, a quick comment. I did put links to both those documents in the chat pod. Uh, I, went, I went the Google Drive route. I figured that might be easier to get to. Um, but yeah, definitely very useful and, and impactful tools to, that you both have. And definitely, we have time for questions. You can unmute yourself or drop them in the chat box and we can go from there. Well, I find this a very good conversation to have. I mean, so many other chapters are not represented that I think we're going to see some additional volunteer pro, uh, problems coming up through the courses of the years for projects that, that aren't controlled uh, somehow by the university. Um, because that reflects on the entire program. If one chapter continues to get by with just doing landscape projects for their homeowners association, or if they get to by, you know, just helping their neighbor plant a garden as their master gardener project, that reflects bad on, I think, the rest of the program. So. Absolutely. And what I plan to do uh, with this recording is I will share it out and I can even share it with the uh, Master Gardener leadership team that I visited with in October. And then, um, yeah, it can be shared out from there as well. I have a question. Um, so with Dr. Trinkline now assuming the role of state coordinator, um, I mean, has there been any talk that some of these things would be implemented in some format statewide or, I mean, is that something that in his new role you think he's gonna be doing? I think that he is open to um, suggestions. I, I don't know about in his new role, but when I've talked to him about different things that we're doing here, um, he's definitely been open to suggestions. He's, he's allowed each one of us to do things um, as needed for our own chapters, but uh, but I know that like Eric and I have been going through the statewide statewide guidelines to see if there's things that could be clarified or or um, may need some revision, and and we will bring that forth to him um, to see what he thinks. And he and what he has said is that he um, he will review things and make sure that they're okay. And and he also wants to take things to the leadership team and get approval. Um, for anything that really does change. So if you're seeing something that you think should change, um, or if you think that these tools are something that could be maybe incorporated into the guidelines just as a tool, then then let him know, um, or or let Eric and I know, and we can we can take it to him with other changes. But I, at any time I've worked with him, he's he seems to be very open to suggestions from us because he knows that we're the ones in the field, and I. I Think that he would definitely listen to us. And Robert, I, I do think that you're right in the fact that um, in a sense we do need to understand what are the different site locations that we have and how can we actually provide some sort of documentation of the impact of each of those different sites that that we have for each of our chapters and I would hope that we would be moving more so in that in a direction of being able to do that. A question that's kind of off-sided but anyway of the master gardeners that are taking the online project they're doing it online are you finding those then putting in their service hours on these approved projects? Are they aware of these approved projects? I'm just kind of curious how those that are doing things online are actually getting their volunteer hours in. So you're, I'm assuming what you're asking is they're taking the Master Gardener class online. Is that correct? Yep. 
Okay, so Dave Trinkline has a copy of all those individuals that have signed up, and then he emails that out to all the coordinators so that if you've got someone in your location uh, it, that would be, could be part of your chapter, you um, have that information. What I do each time that I get that, if there's a, uh, someone in my location, I will send them an email um, and uh, tell them that I, who I am and that we have chapter meetings and that we would like for them to attend. Um, and that here is a list of all the different locations that are designated um, and that I hope that they would be um, willing to come and that I would add them to the um, newsletter that they would get on a monthly basis. I then also send that to the president of the chapter and she will also, um, the one that I have presently, will then also send an email to those individuals that are online as well. Okay, so how's that working out? Are they showing up? Are they getting their hours? Are they working on those projects? Um, I will be honest with you. I do not advertise the online course. I would really like to have them face-to-face -face in my classroom. Um, I have had some folks that have signed up uh, through the online. Uh, probably about a total of eight um, in the past five years, and four of them um, are active or putting hours in. What would you say, Debbie, your, your percentage then that show up face-to-face? -face, is it better, more retention? I'd say it's about the same, about half and half. Half the yeah. people that have come to face-to-face will put in hours and volunteer and half of them probably a third to a half don't. Um, but over time, some of them will, will drop out. Right. Right. And that tends to be a, a pattern in, in many different volunteer groups. A lot of people get excited about it. And the, when they find out what it, what it's about and what it takes, and they kind of, well, maybe it's not for me. And that's one of the reasons in my class I ask um, one of the four, because we, well, we'll probably be three, but we'll, we have a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer. And since we maintain their account in the 9,000 account in the office, all she does is just report how much money there is. So we're there to talk about making it a secretary treasurer. Um, but I require or ask that one of the officers, or if they can't make it, a representative from the Master Gardener chapter to be at every class to at least visit with them. Um, I ask all of them, the officers, to be there that first day to help walk around, greet, shake hands, welcome people, etc. And then by having the different site location volunteer leads come and talk about their site um, and then uh, that helps and then inviting them to the we meet bi-monthly as a chapter and asking them to come to those meetings uh, has also been helpful as well. I want to put in a few cents as well. Um, so we we have for the most part our face-to-face -face, um, graduates they they stay around at least for that first year and and pretty much afterwards. Um, we had I think over 30 online uh, graduates this year. So we had a total of 50 some that graduated from the program. When when we get that list, uh, Kathy Belensky, she will send emails. We also send the list to our membership committee who reach out to all of the people who graduated online. Um, we, we definitely have seen that we don't retain nearly as many of the online graduates as our face-to-face. -face, and we have probably even getting a hold of them. The phone number has been a bit of an issue, but I'm hoping that that, that somehow resolves itself if we can at least get their phone number. But um, we, one thing that we're doing is when we have our graduation with our face-to-face -face is we invite the online people to come too so they can at least meet their same class cohort. And we didn't have many people show up, but the people that did, they had so many questions. And, and it was really good to be able to talk with them face to face. We have a lot of questions that are asked online um, or via email. And so we reach out to them a lot. Um, and those, those that respond, we've had some really great online graduates become very, very involved. 
we make sure that they know what projects we have. We make sure they know exactly what our expectations are. Our chapter has different expectations than, than the, the baseline statewide. So it's not 30 hours. We have 40 hours that they have to get. And so that, that right there is a shock to most of the online folks. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so um, that's something that we have to work through. But, but I, I, I don't necessarily advertise the online, but when people ask about the program, we make sure that they know that, that there is an online. One of the things that one of our online graduates pointed out is when they went, when they Googled the Master Gardener program and they came on the, the statewide site, there's nothing in there that actually lists the local chapters face to face. And so he didn't even know that there was a face to face option. So um, that may be something that needs to be changed in the future. And I think Dr. Trinkline said he was going to look into that. If anybody has any questions about the um, application, feel free to reach out to me. I know Debbie is that way too. Um, I reached out to her. I've reached out to so many of you guys to find out what it is that you do in your chapter. Um, so definitely feel free to ask any questions. I opened the sheets, you know, these um, worksheets that you guys included on here, the, the links. I opened the links and the, it pulled it up. Um, and then I hit print and I cannot get it to print. So, Eric or I don't know who what if one of you would send those out through email that would be wonderful because I cannot get them to print off they open up on my screen but when I hit print they don't want to print okay well, to see, and my printer is turned on and so yeah. I <laughs> no I will, I will along with the link to the recording I'll I'll attach the copies of the forms when I send that out yeah good thought okay thank you Sometimes, Jennifer, it won't print for me, but um, if I save it to my computer, like on my desktop, and then print it, it will work that way. I think having the actual document sent might help, especially on mine, because it has those billable, billable links. Um, if it's on another one, I don't know if those, those links are lost. But. Okay, but Eric, you say you're, you will send it out in an email to everybody, to the coordinators? Right, I will. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Any other thoughts? Anybody thinking of how you might incorporate it into your program or maybe introduce it to your groups in January and say, here, this is something new we're doing. Uh, and then anybody looking at incorporating it or have more questions about it? Just my two cents. I think we all ought to be doing this statewide. I think every Master Gardener chapter and coordinator needs to be doing this. So I think this is really good. So I think we had to promote it as a leadership team. I think that'd be great. Yeah, I think we have a couple different versions because not every chapter is going to need all of the details. So it's nice that there's there's multiple versions. I think. I think what's most important is to know what our master gardeners are doing for their projects, and then being able to try to and who's in charge more or less and then being able to gather some impact from those different sites. Those are the three main things I think that we really need to be doing as a whole across the state. And by all means, feel free to email Dave and let him know your thoughts as well. And Justin, with you, with your, uh, you do a lot of your volunteering at the site um for St. Charles um and I could see perhaps having each of your different areas within the garden being a site and education although I don't know if that would really work or not it might be a little different for you and I don't know how you would do this for those master gardeners that volunteer in the St. Louis area or the chapter there for um at the botanical gardens that might be working in the gardens and not necessarily on the hotline. Yeah, so um, fortunately, uh, less and less of the hours in St. Louis are going to MOBOT. Um, we have a lot of different volunteer sites in St. Louis that are established. Mostly they're with you know partner organizations um, that are kind of 
running the garden and whatnot. Uh, St. Charles, you're right. I mean, most of the hours go into that one garden, but um, we are developing some other uh, project sites as well. And, you know, really trying to shift both chapters focus towards education because, you know, I think like a lot of chapters, they had been um, just assuming that it was all about educating themselves and they, they didn't really have much of an outward focus. So, you know, it's taken a little while to steer the ship in the right direction, but I think we're headed there. Very good. Any other thoughts or questions for the good of the cause? Not seeing any in the chat. All the microphones are still muted, so. <laughs> just want to take another moment to thank Debbie and Tamara for coming on and sharing this tool. Definitely it's something we can talk about with the leadership team and, and promote to our colleagues as a resource, not only um, to help them show impact, but to also engage their volunteers in the mission of Master Gardeners. So any final thoughts? Can I just ask a question? And yes. Just, so I, I am just wondering if, and this isn't necessarily about the application, but for the people that are still on, um, what are your thoughts about having extension be a part of the Master Gardener name? I'm finding it's very helpful here, but I just don't know what it, what it would be like in, in your different areas. Well, I think it's gonna put some pressure on some people as if they have to, um, behave to a higher standard, uh, which is actually why we have that. Um, but I think for some people that it's gonna be a bit, little bit intimidating for them to, to be part of that. Others would eat that right up and do their best and it would be amazing. But I think it's gonna be interesting just to watch and see. I think it's all around, it's a great idea. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, like my St. Charles chapter, all their gardens are on site so they're really well connected they get the connection um the st louis chapter is a different story i mean i think i think having it in the name is a good thing honestly i do too um but my situation's a little bit different in the sense that when i first came whoops oh, okay i thought it was muted sorry um when I first came, I had a hard time distinguishing what was a nonprofit and what was uh, Master Gardener. And most of the folks didn't even know that the Master Gardener program was part of University of Missouri, much less extension. Um, they didn't even know what extension was. Um, but then again, there wasn't any real true oversight by a specialist for the chapter. So it's taken me a while and everything that I've done has been done slowly and over time. Um, I, I'm not opposed to it. I think it's a good idea um, because it's, that's what it is. It's an extension program. Right, and I'll add to that. I worked with uh, Master Gardeners for a number of years uh, when I worked for uh, Botanic Gardens had no idea they were connected to the university. So I think the more we can add that extension name, not only does it connect the program to the university, but it also kind of reminds perhaps, uh, you know, volunteer groups that they are, they're not their own entity, that they actually are part of the, the arm of extension in the community. I know that um, at, at a national level, uh, a lot of a lot of states are now using that. Some even put volunteer at the end, so it's extension master gardener volunteer. That makes it pretty long. But most of the states surrounding us use extension master gardener, and they'll even put that on the name tag. Um, I'm I'm thrilled that my AMGs they they really want it. They they actually want to have that closer affiliation with the university. So. Anyway, just, just so you know, it's working here. Um, I would be very interested to find out if anybody else wanted to try that. I asked Dr. Trinkline if it was okay if we started going by EMG, and he, was, he, he told me it was just fine. So um, I am not trying to push it on anybody, but I, 
just want you to know that it's it's been helpful here. I I like that we have that closer affiliation with the university. It's been good for me and it's been good for them. And I think it's really good for the community to to know who we are. Okay, we are straight up 11 o'clock. And no folks need to get back to other business you need to attend to attend to. So I want to thank Tamara and Debbie again. And definitely if you have questions uh, for either one of them, you can email them, you can email me and I'll, I'll route it to the person that needs or, you know, can answer it. And, and again, I'll send out this link to the recording along with the forms for you to use. So thank you all for attending. I know we, we caught some folks off guard being on the Monday after a, uh, a four or three day weekend, whatever that turned out to be. But I know many people are interested in this. I've had a number of conversations with um, specialists across the state. So very important and, and thank you both for sharing it. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right, y'all have a good, good rest of your day.